let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of working in groups. I'm Alex Lyon, and we're working out of B.B. and Masterson's book, Communicating in Small Groups, and they have a list of advantages, disadvantages, and when you should not work in groups. So we're going to unpack that now. So let's start with the advantages. First of all, working in groups gives you, number one, more information. That comes from group members, you have various backgrounds and experiences, and together you are going to have more information and knowledge than any one member could possibly have. So that collective experience is really going to benefit everybody. Number two, enhanced problem solving. So groups usually make much better decisions because as they say, two heads are better than one. So if you have lots of ideas, I think Linus Pauling said this, the best way to get a good idea is to get lots of ideas and you have enhanced problem solving when you have multiple people in a discussion. You come up with ideas that nobody alone could have come up with. You combine ideas, you make compromises, you spark each other's imagination and creativity. Number three, there's greater comprehension and improved learning that comes from working actively alongside other people. As you learn and see other people learn, you're going to learn more. You've probably experienced this, by the way, if you've ever taken any kind of lesson, like diving lessons or skateboarding lessons or just about anything, the coach might try to explain it to you and you sort of get it. But when you watch someone else learn it, then you go, oh, that's what the coach wanted me to do. So there's greater comprehension that we gain, better learning, in other words, as you learn alongside other people. Number th- number four, enhanced satisfaction. So we me- feel more fulfilled when we see that we are participating in these positive outcomes that the group is achieving. So it feels good to be part of something bigger than ourselves, and a group can always accomplish more than an individual. So you get to be part of bigger successes, more positive outcomes. Number five, enhanced self-understanding. And that's due in part to feedback. So we can often learn about who we are and what makes us tick, what our strengths are, what our areas of development are by working alongside other people. You start to notice, oh, that person's really good at this thing. And I'm not, so I wanna work on that. Or I look up to them. Or they might say to you, oh, you know, you're really good with, with visual stuff. Maybe you could help us enhance these slides or make this look better on our website. So you learn a lot by working alongside each other about yourself, that self-understanding. It's also what we call social facilitation. People tend to work harder because they are working alongside other people. Other people are watching and they're present. So they, you want other people to approve of you. Even if it's a healthy competition, you want to do well in front of other people. And that's one of those overall benefits that comes out of working in groups. There are also some disadvantages to working in groups. The first one is pressure to conform. This is, there's a very popular theory called groupthink that shows that sometimes people will conform to group pressure to maintain harmony, even though they know the decision may not be a good one. So the solution to this, of course, is critical and independent thinking. You can't let that pressure make you give up any strong objections you might have. You can also invite an outsider in to the group to get their outsider perspective. That same kind of pressure won't be on them. And you can always assign a devil's advocate where some it's someone's job for a little while to point out other ways of thinking, to point out possible mistakes. Number two, disadvantage, individual domination. You have probably seen this where one or two people start to take over the group and it becomes very dissatisfying. It's a real bummer for the rest of the group. And the solution, of course, is to try to channel that dominant person's focus into something helpful. And if you need to give direct feedback to the person, then you can do that. I, in my classes frequently, I, I value talkative members because they can get things going. But at some point, usually I have to say, okay, thank you. Now let's hear from some new voices, some other people. Usually that direct feedback begins to help. Sometimes you have to be even more direct than that. Another disadvantage, number three, is an uneven work distribution. There's a concept called social loafing that happens when some group members will hold back 
because they're waiting to see who else is going to step up and do the work. And that can really lead to some people doing all the work and other people doing almost nothing. So what you want to do for a solution is to encourage attendance and participation and then set clear expectations for the contribution of all members. For example, you might deliberately say as an informal leader of the group at the beginning, you might just say, let's just make sure everybody's doing equal amounts of work. And then once you put that standard out there, then there's a standard for people to live up to. You can measure people's participation against that, and you may have to revisit that and come back to it. Another disadvantage of working in groups is time. So meetings take a lot of time. There can be a lot of wasted time, and everybody is there, right, all at once. So it's everybody's collective time that they could be individually working on their own. Meetings and groups are very time intensive. So the solution would be to budget the right amount of time for the meeting. Don't have a two-hour meeting when a half-hour meeting will do. And create very clear agendas when you meet so that you have direct goals and everybody's able to stay on focus. And then actively facilitate. Don't just let a meeting drift endlessly and then you end up with nothing at the end. I've seen this happen many times. Really, you have to facilitate and make sure this forward progress toward the goals that you're all meeting for. Now, there are also times when you should not collaborate in groups where it just doesn't make sense to do it, and it's probably going to cause more harm and frustration than good. Number one, when there is limited time. If there's a real time crunch, then it's probably not great to say, well, let's slow down even more and work together as a team. Collaboration takes time. And if you're, if you're on a very short deadline, you might just be better off working individually and sprinting for a while. Number two, when the expert already has the answer. So if you can just email somebody or text somebody or pick up the phone and get whatever answer you're looking for, there's no need for the team to sit around and figure it out. There is a much more efficient way to handle that. Number three, when information that you need is already available. If you can just Google something, I've seen this a million times where people are debating in a meeting and arguing about what they should do and what something means. Someone will just Google it and get the answer. And if you really did not need to work together and collaborate in the first place if the answer was readily available. And number four, and this is a big one, when conflict is unmanageable. So sometimes... There's a lot of conflict, and there might be long-standing and unproductive disagreements, and it makes it very hard to work together. makes it unsustainable, as they say. So that might not be a time that, hey, let's all collaborate again. You might need to do some mediation or some hands-on facilitation in this discussion, like an outside facilitator and move forward on those problems before you can begin to think about collaborating again. So there are some advantages and disadvantages, and even sometimes where you should not work in groups. So question of the day for you, what do you think are some other advantages or disadvantages? What are your likes and dislikes about working in groups? I would love to hear your comments in the description below this video. I look forward to reading them there. Take care.